Welcome guys with another reaction with the Toxic Channel with second part of Andrew Tate. So we're just gonna get to it because uh, I already you already know what I'm gonna say, uh, guys. Make sure to check the store. I'm gonna say whatever. Well, I'm gonna show you whatever we have in the video. So yeah, the video I mean is like uh, what we have in the stores and purchase something as a support for us and uh, something gonna look good on you. I have a lot of design there. Make sure to check them. Yeah, so as I said before, this is the design I made today. My book, Couple Design, you can see it in blue and pink for women and men. We have this one as a new one. Yeah, like I said, every day a new design. You see the, the f my favorite one. I like this one too. It's 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 poetry here. Uh, I like freedom, this one. And my favorite is the fox, the dream catcher. This one is my favorite. And this one is also nice, like as you, you can see the, the words, like yeah, we have a bunch of design, you may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us, guys. Just, it's not going to take much of you. You're going to choose just one of them, guys. May click on it, puff, and buy. That's that's the easy step. You choose, we have different color. You may you choose the color and you just click. We have different, as you can see, and different tie as your size, as you see, you just click add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys thank you make sure to subscribe subscribe let's dive in you're just poking the artists just poking so you know mm. having fun with them <laughs> and, and and i'll be honest i made a bunch of money on crypto yeah that's what i, I said a bunch of, it's not who I that's what i said in the first part uh, the guy make a lot of money in crypto but he doesn't believe in the, the shit coin meme coins I am. It's not my personality. I find that amazing. Anyone who's been following me for a very long time has seen some of my OG tweets. I was in Pancake at like 40 cents and that went up to oh, like $15. $16. I made, I don't know, 60, 70 million dollars of crypto. But imagine that becoming your personality. What kind of loser are you to make some money from an internet digital money and then make it your profile picture and change your display name? My, I'm Andrew Tate. I'm a kickboxing world champion. I'm Andrew Tate. That's who I am as a man. Imagine I became Bitcoin dot <laughs> Putting up a Bitcoin symbol. I'm a, uh, you know the crazy car part of what? Sorry, the crazy car uh, part of what, uh, what's going to happen right now. You see what he said, the name. They going to create, a, really, they going to create a shit coin, a meme coin in general. They going to create it, put it, and they made you believe that, oh, Andrew speaking about it, it's going to go up. And they're going to tweet about it. And you're going to see how he speak about it right now. You're going to see it in... Maybe one minute, two minutes later, it's going to drop out. I remember this is it happened before. He said a word and they put it directly. <laughs> Crazy. It's obviously a scam. Yeah, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. That's you? That's your personality? That's everything you are? I look at these crypto influencers, man. There's some of them on YouTube. During the bull run, they were big. But They're all getting paid. Issues. And then Bitcoin. There's one guy who yells all the time. I don't know where he's from. Bitcoin. 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 Bro, you are never, ever, ever going to have a woman who loves you like that. I, I think he, he doesn't yell, but I think he's speaking about, oh, I forget his name, the black man, black dude, I forget his name. He's from Nigeria, who was uh, telling uh, in 2011 to buy Bitcoin when it was, uh, 2013, when he was saying to tell, uh, tell people to buy Bitcoin when it was $1. I think he's speaking about him, but I forget really his name. I, th I don't know, but I think he's speaking about him. Because he's the one who said, I told you to buy Bitcoin. He kept insisting on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is already late now for everybody. Only for rich people who can do the, with it. But for now, Bitcoin is, I believe, is done. Not done. Sorry, not done. It means like it's for the, for the people who said, like, we want to invest, still, still invest in cryptos. Bitcoin is too much for you. Not deep in our heart. Not ready to die for you. Not ready to shoot at the cops while you escape. You won't. I will. Because I'm me. All you talk about is in the blockchain. Nobody cares. <laughs> you made a bit of money. Great. Fine. Why is it your personality? Get a f in life. Crypto Twitter is full of losers. Such losers. I would argue we could line up 10,000 of them here on the street. And I would face them all in mortal combat one by one. And I guarantee I might be a little bit out of breath. When the 10,000th man falls in a lifeless pile on the floor you will understand why i prod crypto twitter nobody probably with the cigar in your mouth i would assume <laughs> power up first <laughs> f them nerds and f 
the crypto influencers. They're the biggest nerds of all. Biggest nerd. I wish I knew. Yeah, I would say this also. I would, I will agree here because this, don't believe everything you see on YouTube and they speak about, oh, look, you need to. Don't believe in this garbage because they are paid to say what they are going to say. And it's not important to them for you if you're going to get scammed or no. Here, they already get their money. So don't believe. That's, I agree here. 100% I agree. Do their names. This one guy was always screaming. I did, a, I did a video about NFTs as well. That was hilarious. NFTs. There are people who spent $5 million on a JPEG. On a JPEG. People were trying to get me to invest in NFTs. And I said, no, I'm morally against. So you'll make money. I don't want to make money that way. I want to make money with hardship and struggle. I'm going to run my university. I'm going to have morning meetings with my professors. I'm going to hold them accountable for teaching the students. How yeah, to and uh, as I said before, guys, uh, a, lot of, a lot of us trying to make a living with this kind of things. Like when, you know, doing what he like. For example, for me, I'm speaking by myself. I like, I like to talk with people. And I like to speak speak with a lot of people to understand how their mind work, and we have different point of view. They give me information. Maybe I'm, I can I give information to them. It's gonna be necessary to them, and they give me information necessary to me. That's why I like to talk to people because I believe that everybody is smart. I I that's what I believe 100%. I believe that everybody is smart. It's just some people choose to be stupid, and stupid is really a gift because. You know, not many people would like to go to be st st still stupid. So, but most of them like doesn't care at all. Anyway, I believe like, as, as I was saying, like I like, I like to speak with people. That's why I open the YouTube channel and do videos and do reaction in general to give my opinion and to receive your opinion at the same time. I would like to give a platform for everybody to share their opinion, critics, still healthy critics. You know, like you don't agree. For example, you don't agree with this guy. Let's, for example, I don't agree. Why you don't agree with this guy? In general, why you don't agree? He say this kind of things. What kind of things he's saying that you don't agree? And then we talk about them. And we try to correct them. If you, if it does, for example, if it's this guy, what he's saying, it doesn't suit your moral. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't suit your moral. It doesn't go with your moral. That's not in my morals. I don't believe in this, especially when... If you are religious, I don't believe what he's saying. For for example, me, I don't I don't believe when he say when he speak about uh, getting eleven wife, wife, twelve wives, stuff like I don't agree. I don't I don't agree on that. I disagree fully. Like I I like in my personality as a Muslim, I I don't play with women. I just like to have one woman, one woman. For me, I'm speaking by my opinion and have a lot of kids, like my grandpa did. Uh, nah, if it's possible, eighteen. If it's not, then nine. That's how I, I told my mom. She started laughing. Like, what the fuck are you going to do? I say I'm going to have a lot of money for it. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm saying. I like to speak with other people. And this is the only way that I find to speak respectfully with other people, sharing my opinion. Because can, you cannot do it outside, going outside. And, hey, how can you share your opinion? It's not. And this is the respectful way to do it. And the same time, it's platform to share your opinion too. Yeah, and uh, as, I, as he said, like, uh, I could do other things, like, Everybody, I believe, can do OnlyFans. It's not that hard. Everybody can do... I don't know. There is a lot of dumb shit like streaming. and You know, the, the easiest way to believe, believe me, is the easiest way is that you go outside and be a clown. Be a clown, entertain, like be stupid, go jump in what I don't know, jump in the f fountain, um, j hit your ball. I don't know what to do, guys. Just be stupid outside and do stream it in the same time. And you see how many links you... How many likes you're gonna get in uh, one hour? You're gonna get much more than I'm having in a video where you can get information how to get rich and why this is shit and why this is not and stuff like this. You will not, people doesn't pay attention to this shit. But anyway, I like to. So it do, it doesn't matter how much it's gonna take. I like to share my opinion and I like to receive your opinion. You can info. You can even give me better opinion than him. You never know. That's the truth. That's the truth. Millions of dollars. So share, uh, war, comment, guys, comment. It's going to be hard. I'm going to manage everyone, and we're going to put together this huge network of people who are genuinely benefiting. I do not want to make money from buying a JPEG for a dollar and selling it for two dollars. I don't give a shit about that. I refuse. People were saying to me, "Yo, but, but you don't understand. It's not just a JPEG, bro. What is it? It's on the blockchain, oh, okay, bro. Okay. And you can see on EtherScan who owns it. You are never going uh, to NFTs, yes." Ever, ever. <laughs>
Never will she look at you with desire. She'll look at you and go, oh, I guess I kind of have to. It's been a few months. I guess pay the rent. That's, that's the best you can hope for with your internet coins. And, I'm, and this is from someone who's made money with crypto. I have never sat. You know what I find amazing about crypto? When I was making billions and billions of dollars with crypto, this is, I never sat there the trying most, to convince anyone else. This is the most interesting conversation I, I heard Andrew having with another interviewer. This is the most interesting for me. Now, I like the real interview. It was with uh, Tucker, Pierce Morgan and um, Tucker Carlson. But this one is really funny, Educate, educational, funny, sarcastic, speak a lot about a lot of things. So yeah, you enjoy this. Yeah, this kind of interview, I really enjoy them. I'd sit down at a table. Let's say Bitcoin had just pumped and I made $20 million. So I'm going, what do you think about Bitcoin? I go, quiet, do you want? Who gives a fuck? That's it. You ask a crypto guy about Bitcoin. Now, I'm talking to someone with over 1,000 Bitcoin. Blockchain. If someone asks me about Bitcoin now, I have over 1,000. Someone says, what do you think about Bitcoin? I say, you can buy it if you want. It's an investment. That's, that's the end. Ask someone with 1.4 Bitcoin about Bitcoin. <laughs> Whoa! The money's a scam because of the blockchain. Nakamoto, Satoshi, <laughs> shut the fuck up. You're broke, you're broke, you're broke, <laughs> nobody cares. Buy new shoes, your shoes are all dirty. Tie your shoelaces. These losers have so much to say and no money. I don't understand. Why are you trying to convince someone else to buy Bitcoin? You have no money. Go get a job. Get a job. I think... I, I don't know. I'm someone with loads of crypto, and someone goes, what do you think about crypto? So, do what you want. Because if I tell them to buy and it goes up, they won't give me any money. And if it goes down, they'll cry their eyes out. So why am I even talking to this person? There's nothing to do with it. You do what you want. Make your own decisions. You're a full-grown man. Whenever I see a brokey, where was I? I was in, I think it was Miami. And they had one of these Bitcoin conventions or something, crypto things. And I was in my blacked out Escalade with my private security with their guns, of course. And I, and I knew it was going on. I was like, just pull up outside. We're driving around Miami. We pulled up outside. And I just sat there for like five minutes watching the people go. Imagine this. Imagine you're watching this right now and you're a, and you're a Bitcoin dork. And you went to an event in Miami about a year and a half ago. You might have only been a few meters away from Tall Jesus. I might have been watching you. We were walking in and out. And I was sitting in that black Escalade looking out the tinted window. I just looked at all these people and I just thought, you're losing, 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 losing. Let's go, guys. Losing. So that's enough. Yeah? That's enough. <laughs> Sorry, crypto Twitter. You know what the funniest thing is? I'm not done with these nerds. Funniest thing is this. The best thing a crypto dork could do if he made money would be invest in himself. Because he's a nerd with money now, right? So like, look at Zuckerberg, he's doing jujitsu, he's training, he's realized that money cannot make up for all his obvious deficiencies, so he has to invest in himself. The problem is crypto's made the money so easy. But that's not bad, bro. They're not used to struggle or hardship, so they're not even gonna be able to invest in themselves. If I was a crypto dork and I made money, I would message me, Andrew Tate, and say, I'm a loser, but I'm super rich. I'll pay you a million dollars a day to teach me how to speak like you, and teach me how to fight, and make me train, please. But they, but they haven't even got the self, they're not even smart enough to look at themselves in the mirror and realize that's what they should do with the money. You know what they'll do with the money? Buy a, buy a car, buy a Gucci t-shirt, says Gucci, Gucci. That's a smart conversation. Then they'll buy an NFT so they can brag to their other nerds. I've got the board ape 3.2 board. Oh, fucking life. Then they'll hire some hookers, sniff some coke, then they'll spend it all. If they would have invested in themselves, at least they'd become somebody. Upgrade your character in the video game of life. We're living in a simulation. Upgrade your character. Become a superhero. As the levels of life go on, the bosses get harder and harder to beat. That's why you have to upgrade your character. That's the whole point of it. No. Nerds. I'll hey, you have an hour this week, right? Yeah. Great. I can teach you how to play 100 songs on piano in an hour. No way. Oh, you I will never launch a crypto ever for that reason. Because I don't want to have anything to do with these dorks. Also, another reason, I'm not done. I'm not when, stopping you. <laughs> when you have hundreds of millions of dollars, you're not interested in these super huge pumps. Super huge pumps are for brokies. I'm happy to buy Bitcoin and make a 10% return. If I put in 100 million and make a 10% return, it's fine. 
Why would I take a risk? The only reason these people want to turn $100 into a million is because they're poor, which means they have to take the biggest gambles. I don't need to gamble. I'll just pay coin ETH. I'm done. Okay, it's junk. So I will never launch a coin. I will never sell out my fans. We have the real world, which will teach you how to make money for real. We have the war room, which will give you the masculine brotherhood you need to resist oppression. That is it. I don't need to launch a coin. So we've talked about cars, money, watches, and assets. We've talked about crypto, and all of this goes round to me thinking there's one way that trumps all of them that you've made money. And it's also how I've made a few hundred million pounds in sales, and that is through speaking, yep. through your voice, yep. your energy, yep. your personality that you articulate in such a way that you can move hearts and minds and create a movement and get people to change and pay you for that change. I agree with you. A transfer of energy yep. from where they were to where they want to go. A, and inspiring them to see a better future. And when people can see a better future in themselves, they'll pay the person who can take them there. Yep. And I, that's made you, maybe that's made you the billionaire. Yes, you're right, it has. But I would argue that it's struggle that made me a billionaire because it's struggle that taught me the lessons. And then I learned to articulate the lessons in a way people can understand. So that's the vehicle. Yeah, struggle has yeah. always been the vehicle for me. Right. If you or, it's, at, or it's the struggle, the engine. Yes. I, you know what's a perfect example? If you watch any, I've noticed this, it's an observation of mine. If you watch any superhero movie, bad things happen to him. Mm. Then he becomes a superhero. Every time. It's true. Batman's parents die, he just becomes a superhero. Mm. So I think that's pretty obvious in the masculine frame. Bad things have to happen to you for you to become a superhero. But then bad things have to happen, but that breaks most people and you have to figure out how to turn that into good. Correct, absolutely. And that's also why you have to be hard on yourself, but that's also why you need to see bad things as a blessing because they're the building blocks to make you the man you want to be. When, when people say to me, this bad thing happened to me, I say, good. That's my, that's my instant response. This girl left me, good. I lost all my money, good. What do you mean good? Good. This is your chance to take all of that negative emotion, all of those building blocks, and turn yourself into a man that prevents these bad things happening to them ever again. Now, of course, you have to have the agency to do that. You're right. If you're going to be broken by it, then you're going to fail. But bad things are certainly a blessing. I believe that's how God teaches. I would actually argue that men only learn through pain. I think we only learn that way. I don't think men know how to learn the easy way. I can speak for myself. How many times? Men are, men are pretty simple. We'll, we'll cheat on our girl and almost lose her, and we'll cheat on our girl and almost lose her, and we'll cheat on our girl and almost lose her, and we'll cheat on our girl and almost lose her, and then we'll cheat on our girl and she'll leave, and we'll be like, oh, <laughs> we had our chances. We won't take them. This is how we are. We'll drive that car and almost crash 100 times, and it's only after we plow it into a tree that we'll learn a lesson. Do you know we have our board meetings, and whenever things are going well, we never really thrash it out. We only thrash it out when things are not going well that Always. Much. Always. Yeah. Always. That's how we are. We learn through pain and suffering, which is why God gives it to us, because God is here to teach us. God is like a father, and a father teaches you, I believe, through pain. Uh, if a dad wants to teach you how to ride a bike, he puts you on the bike, lets you fall off and get hurt, puts you back on the bike. Over and over and over until you can ride the bike. God does the same thing. You don't get the lessons you want, you get the lessons you, you need. need. Yeah. Absolutely agree. So I believe that bad things happening to you are a fantastic thing. I believe you need to be strong enough to deal with them and then articulate them. I do find it amazing that a lot of people can't speak well. I find that truly amazing. If you don't have the ability to project your thoughts to other people, I don't know how you're going to be successful in life. The reason I refuse to learn another language is because I haven't learned English yet. There's words I don't know. And English is the most profitable language for me to know. So I'm going to learn English. If I want to spend time learning a language, I'll read the English dictionary. I'm not going to learn another language and start stuttering like a dummy. But there are people who've been speaking English their entire life, and they can't even speak it. It's actually a, a pet peeve of mine. You know when you said earlier about being rich allows you to say no? I'm going to be very honest. I am the worst person to pitch to. I get people trying to pitch me for business, and I'm the worst. Because if you're a vegan, no. <laughs> you turn up in a Prius or a Tesla, no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm nothing against Tesla. Don't ban me, Elon. But if somebody cannot project their ideas to me succinctly, 
I instantly dis just dislike them because maybe I have ADHD, maybe I'm too busy, I don't know what it is, but I don't have time for your ums and ahs. I don't have time for it. So if I'm sitting in a meeting and somebody goes, um, so uh, we're gonna start with, um, and this is how people speak. You're a full grown man and you can't finish a sentence without saying um or ah in the only language you know. You've been speaking it for 40 years. It bothers me. It's a pet peeve of mine. It irks me. Occasionally, we make mistakes. Fine, whatever. But if you actually listened to most people speak, that's how most people communicate with the world. You wonder why you can't convince a girl to sleep with you? Um, uh, um, your tits are nice. Um, <laughs> dummy. You're a dummy. No wonder you can't make any money. <laughs> You're an idiot. This is people. They're um and ah on their way through life. I, it bothers me. When people come to pitch me, if they say um or ah too much in the first sentence, it's over. I'm like, Sorry, sir. When you learn to talk English, when you learn to speak, I might give you another chance. Goodbye. So you're right. The ability to project the thoughts inside of your mind in a way that other people can digest and is also entertaining is massively a superpower. How do you develop that superpower? It's not through practice. People think it's practice. Practice doesn't make perfect. Because, because you can practice a really bad habit and get really good at a really shit thing. Absolutely. Yeah. The person who ums and ahs at 48 has been practicing his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> he's practiced just fine. He's, he's great at that. He's yeah. great. Feedback is what's important. You have to analyze. I'll give you an example. When I was playing chess as a kid, I would play chess That's true. for two hours a day. That's true because what he's explaining here right now, uh, as I'm, I was being a football player, I played football for my life. You can, you can work harder, that's true. You can work harder as much as you can. But if you don't receive, as he said, like if you don't receive feedback from your coach, oh, you did here wrong. For example, my father was my coach. For the game, I crushed it. I was the best, I, I swear, I was the best player in that game. He came, he come, he watched it, Went home, eat, and he started saying like, hmm, you know, you did this his mistake. You didn't pass the ball here. You didn't shoot here. Where you should dribble, you should uh, dribble. You didn't dribble. You passed it. Where you should shoot, you do. You shouldn't. Uh, you did. Uh, you didn't shoot. You 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 dribble. So he only focused on the mistake that I did. And I, in my mind, I did. I thought I did it perfectly. But no, when he, I have feedback from my father, he gave me every mistake I did. And that's how I learned from it. And, and they would say like this, I never heard the, my father telling me, you did a good job today, all the time, mistakes. You did this, it is, but it's true. That's how I learned anyway. That's how One I learned. One hour would be play. One hour would be going back through the games and analyzing the games. I always enjoyed playing, but I hated analyzing. But it was the analysis that made me better. And I can prove that now, because when I was eight or nine, I think my rating was around 1500. Now, I've been playing Blitz. I play three minute chess online. For 20 years, ever since I was a child, and my rating is 1700. I've gotten no better in 20 years, because I don't watch my games back, I don't analyze them. I don't look where I made mistakes, I just play. That's the problem. So when people speak, they just speak. They don't watch themselves back. I'm gonna watch this podcast 10 times. And I'm gonna identify every single time I stuttered or made a mistake or didn't use the word I should have used. And then people are gonna ask me, how do I speak the way I speak? Why do my podcasts get the most views? Because I'm a professional. And if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it properly. That's why. Most people would do, you do podcast, speak good, sit there and uh, talk well. And then they'll finish it and they'll go on with their brokey day be a brokey. But it's very interesting what you said about speech because that also ties back to my current predicament. This is the first time in my adult life I can't use my superpower. Because my superpower is talking. If you were to put me in front of someone and give me an hour to convince them that I could rip out their throat with my little finger, I guarantee by the end they'd be afraid. We both know I probably couldn't. But by the end, part of them would think. <laughs> The power of words. <laughs> uh, he's confident. <laughs> I can't talk in court because I don't speak Romanian. It's very weird for me. I became acutely aware of my superpower because I'm going through this process and my lawyer is talking, blah, blah. 
And I'm like, why am I so frustrated with all of this? And one day it dawned on me, ah, I don't get to talk. When I get to talk, this is how much of a superpower speaking is. When I get to talk, it's fine. I could have talked the ocean out of freezing me to death on the Titanic. I could have literally said, listen, bro. <laughs> my unmatched perspicacity, but I could have ran my mouth and I would have, you know, it would have warmed up for me. I'm that guy. I can't talk now. So it's very frustrating. So it's interesting you say how it's a superpower. It certainly is because I've even realized it in this current predicament. I mean, how important it is to be able to speak. When, when you you've can... lost it, because you've lost it, like if you lost, lost your hands. hands. Yeah. That's right, exactly, yeah. because I've lost it. And the fact there are people going through the world today who want to be successful and want to have all these amazing things and they only speak English, and they communicate in English, and they try and get other people to understand their ideas in English, and they can't speak English. Born to lose. Mm. Born to lose. On Coding, creativity. Think they don't go together? Today we're gonna show you how they do. Well, like, as he said, like, um, when it comes to English, for example, uh, I don't think he's speaking about um, here, I don't think he's speaking about other people who came from another uh, other land. I think he's speaking about the native English speakers. And when they cannot make sentences or they don't know what to say, he's speaking about them. But ooh, I don't think he's talking in general. Because if, you talk, if he's talking in general, there is a lot of people who speak more than one language. And it's really hard to not have an accent in it or sometimes forget words and stuff like this, you know. Uh, so I don't think he's speaking here in general. He's speaking about native English speakers who cannot... Uh, sometimes they forget what to say or how to say it. Or sometimes they forget words and stuff like this. So I don't think it's in general. On a recent live... As I, I get it. I've a lot of people off because I said that ADHD doesn't exist. Okay. Do you think ADHD exists as a concept? Or do you think it's something sold to us by Big Pharma? I don't think it exists. I agree with you. And... I'm gonna say there may be some very extreme examples of somebody who may have ADHD, but like everything in the world today now, it's been so massively overprescribed that it's lost all meaning. Like we talked about rape earlier. Over accused loses meaning. ADHD is overprescribed, lost all meaning. Along with basically every mental illness, it's overprescribed, so it means nothing anymore. I watched a show once about a kid. I don't think he had ADHD, maybe he did. Or maybe he had autism, I don't know what he had. Something. And he had to walk down the stairs in a particular order. Skip the first step, hop on the second step, turn backwards, walk three steps, some weird order for his stairs. If he didn't, when he got in the car, he'd have a temper tantrum, and his parents had to take him back in for him to walk the stairs. And I remember sitting with a girl there saying, this is garbage, that kid needs discipline. And the woman said to me, Oh, maybe he has ADHD, maybe he has autism, you don't understand everything, you're not a psychiatrist, you're not a therapist, blah, blah, blah. And I turned to her and said, I have never seen an African child who has to walk 10 miles for water doing the walk twice because they missed a step. Ever. If it was a disease, that's exactly what you'd see. You'd see African kids walking backwards and doing the hop and doing the walk twice because they missed a step. Never seems to happen, does it? So it's not a disease, is it? It's idiot parents with a spoiled kid. And I would argue that ADHD is pretty much the same in most cases. Oh, he doesn't want to listen, he has ADHD. No, you have no control of your child. That's the first thing. The second thing, of course he has ADHD when he's sitting on a tablet playing video games all day, and now he has to go to school and read a boring book. He's bored, as I would be. Of course he is. The only thing that's gonna keep him doing something that bores him is discipline, and you don't discipline your little kid. So, no, he hasn't got ADHD. You're a crap parent. How about that? I would have loved, I would have loved to tell my father that I can't play chess because I have ADHD. <laughs> I would have loved <laughs> Did you to got the see best lesson? the reaction. Because <laughs> there were times I didn't want to play chess, but I had to play chess. Because I understood that there are some forces of nature which you cannot argue against. When a hurricane comes, there's not much you can do. And when your father says to play chess, there's not much you can do besides obey, unless you want to be destroyed. So I understood. I would have loved to see his reaction. Dad, I have ADHD. Teacher says I have ADHD. Bro, 
I don't know if I'd be sitting here alive. <laughs> but I was raised in a disciplinarian household. And I would love for my children to try that crap with me. Try it. I guarantee my kids will not have ADHD. I'll say it here on camera. I won't, I won't allow them to. I won't allow them to. Mm. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm sure there's extreme examples, but I think most of it is just overdiagnosed lack of discipline, mm. like everything else in the world. Thyroid, no. Overdiagnosed lack of discipline. That's all it is. Depression, no. Overdiagnosed lack of discipline. Discipline will fix your thyroid issue because you'll stop shoving cake down your face. And discipline will fix your depression because you'll become such a monumentally successful person you're not depressed anymore. And it'll fix your ADHD because you do what you're supposed to do, not because you want to do it, not because you're motivated to do it, but because you have to do it, so you're going to do it. That's how it works. That's all it is. We lack discipline in the world today. And there are certain nations where they don't lack discipline, and for some reason, all of these illnesses don't exist. If they're an illness, why are they not universal across the human condition? Why could the kids in China go to school and listen in school, but the kids in America can't? if it's a disease. Genuine question to all the psychiatrists who are making a bunch of money and Big Pharma who are making a bunch of money. Someone answer me. Why can the Chinese kids listen to the teacher? And why can't the American kids listen to the teacher if it's a disease that comes out of nowhere? I'll tell you why. You get your ass whooped in one place and the other you won't. I remember, I love my father with all my heart, but I remember his favorite, his favorite saying was so brutally simple. It used to frustrate me when I was young. It's true. I don't negotiate with children. Done. Can I have this candy? No. Why? I don't negotiate with children. And if I asked again, I got my ass kicked. That was it. Now I'm a full grown man. I think, yeah, I don't negotiate. Imagine me negotiating with a kid. Top jeans, a child here. If you're good, if you're good today and you don't make a mess, I'll give you some candy. I have to do a business deal with a six year old. <laughs> I have to do a business deal with a toddler. Like a dummy. If you want to sleep in a house and you want to eat food, you're going to do as I say, because I raise you. And people can come along and call me all these names. And blah, blah, blah. What Howie does is bad. Da, da. All I'm talking about is the basic discipline that everyone had only 20 years ago. We built the pyramids. We went to the moon. We built New York City and Mumbai and Tokyo and conquered the entire world with discipline. We did fine. The kids became adults and everything was OK. Telling a kid it's not in charge of you does not damage the kid. This new world thing is that the kid's in charge of the parent. Well, the kid feels and the kid thinks the kid is six. <laughs> I don't give a shit what the kid feels and thinks. The kid is six. I am 37. <laughs> I am smarter. So no, and I do not negotiate with children. They will obey me blindly. And you know what? Some liberal idiot is going to take this clip and they're going to put it on Twitter and say, Andrew's a kid, 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 Andrew, And then, like, and like then a, you'll just get bigger. No, I'll get bigger. Like a dummy. And I cannot wait, because the world is cyclical and God is just, for the day to come when their little loser offspring with their huge list of mental illnesses is failing in life. And 30 years from now, when little Andrew Tate their little loser offspring get to look at my winner offspring. And perhaps if I'm still alive and that liberal idiot is still alive, I can inbox him on Twitter and say, good luck, Andrew. God is just. And I'm petting my feet up. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Six. <sighs> just confidential. But it's, the, the amount you say is not putting there any of them in any risk, is it? Depends. What if they want to annihilate my entire bloodline? Well, but the more kids you have, the harder that is for them. Correct. And if they don't know how many there are, it's even harder. Is it more than five? It's more than five. Is it more than 10? I can't give you any more information than that, I'm afraid. Yeah. Well, I respect that, but I've still got to do my job. I, I, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. But yeah, you know, because perhaps after they assassinate me, they might go for the future saviors of Earth. It's like John Connor. Mm. Is that why you're having so many kids? Because the bloodline, the Tate surname. This is an interesting conversation. Let's, let's, we might disagree on this one. 
I think it's the masculine imperative to have as many kids as possible. And I think the only reason men don't have a bunch of kids with a bunch of women is because they're afraid of the woman getting mad at them yelling at them. I think that men, if you were to be honest with yourselves in the mirror, you would say, I want a bunch of kids with a bunch of beautiful women. But they don't because they meet one woman who they love, which is fine. And they know that if they have more than one woman to have kids from, they have kids outside of the marriage, it's going to upset their wife. No. Which is fine. Outside of the marriage, it's haram. Hate on them. I'm saying that. That's why, not what that's why I say I don't disagree when he speaks most of it. Because outside of the marriage, it's haram. Yeah, you can, you can have a second wife and get married, third, fourth. Fourth is enough. That's how it was mentioned in the Quran. That's how we play with it. And you can have fourth if you can equal between them. You can give them the same love, the same uh, money. You can give them the same time, stuff like this. It's going to be quality. That's how the Prophet said it, and that's how the Quran said it. So, yeah, that's how the, we follow it. So, outside of the marriage, it's haram. So, I don't think he's speaking about it. He's speaking about something else. That's all I'm saying. They want. They're allowing the woman's feelings to trump their biological imperative, which, again, is fine. But then you have to sit and think, is my bloodline and my biological imperative and my offspring and my dynasty less important than the feelings of a crying woman who I pay for bills anyway? I don't know. Is it? But in a thousand years, your bloodline will be gone. Or in a million years, your bloodline will be gone. Or in a Disagree. Hundred, in a hundred million years, <coughs> your bloodline will be gone. Takes will always exist into eternity. Masters of Aikido. And I will make sure that is true. <laughs> so... As a man, you have to weigh up. You have to sit and say, okay, I want as many children as possible from beautiful women because I want to recreate as much as possible because that's my masculine imperative. However, it's going to upset the woman who I love, so I'm going to allow her feelings to be more important than my dynasty. I understand why most men make that decision, but then you have to sit and say, well, perhaps if you're in a situation where you're a billionaire and you can financially take care of all these children and all these families, and then perhaps if you believe that you're going to raise the children to resist the matrix and they're going to be future freedom fighters. Perhaps you having as many as possible is even more important. Perhaps now it's actually imperative that it is more important than the female's feelings. Even if the woman has a mental breakdown, even if she cries her eyes out, even if she says, why do you have kids with all those chicks? Why is she pregnant again? I have to save the world. So do you, stay. okay, so I, I get that. So the, the wives and the girlfriends, do, do they all know this is what you're doing? Well, they're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. No, it's... <laughs> it's... I'm, I'm talking hypothetically. No, you're not. I am. You're, you're, you're not. I'm saying, would I be a man in my heart if I allowed a woman's feelings to try to to trump my biological incentives and my ability to save humanity into the future and my dynasty and my bloodline because one woman whose bills I pay is going to get sad about it. What is the logical decision as a man? Baby, it's okay. You're my favorite. Yeah, she has a kid, but you're my favorite. Here's a Bentley. You know? The problem is, this is basically all women's fault. Because women are slow. If men grew babies, it would take two weeks. Nine months to make a single baby. And you're worried about me having them with someone else. Well, if you would got, if you'd get it done, if you gave me one a week, we'd be fine. That's 52 a year. That's enough. If you're going to tell me that across five years, the best I'm going to get is three little babies, a skill issue. Are you going to fight Jake Paul? Nah. Come on. It would be interesting. It was, should have happened three or four years ago when I first called him out, but I have other fights going on, unfortunately. Okay, so let's say you could get out of Romania and there's a logistical way you could fight Jake Paul. Would you fight Jake Paul? So what is ClickUp? ClickUp is an all-in-one productivity software where you can manage everything and anything related. Or Logan Paul. Or Jake and Logan, you and Tristan. I picked Jake and Logan the same night. <laughs> you know what? It's kind of... You must be f***ing tempted. But then tempted, tempted for what? I don't need money. 
I don't need fame. I'm the A side. I'm more famous than them. I'm more. I'm richer than them. Jake's actually a nice guy. I think I miss Jake. I don't know Logan. I spoke to Jake. I know this is gonna sound crazy. My credentials are based on my physical capability, and they exist. Up till about three or four years ago, because I did a video calling out Jake Paul three or four years ago. Up to about three or four years ago, I still walked around on the street by myself. And I knew that I could deal with 99% of the problems by myself. But then something changed, and I'm not sure what it was. I don't know if I'm getting old, I don't know what it was. But now I, I kind of see fighting as baloney. And I'm glad I did it, and it's a huge part of my personality, and I'm glad I can still do it, make no mistakes. I can still do it. But now I think, I mean, now I don't go anywhere without five armed goons. I just feel like, Just shoot me. You know, I can't explain. Something's changed mentally. It's like the mafia mentality's changed. I've gone from the hitman to the guy who calls the hits. That's how I feel. Mm. And every time people mention this fight, they say, you can make $10 million. And I just think, 10, bro. <laughs> I made that yesterday. I didn't even get out of bed. 10 million it's to two, train. It's two of your cars. Bro, it's, yeah. it's pennies to me. It's not even worth it. But I think you could make a lot more than that. Though. Uh, yeah, of course I could, and I'd spark them. But I feel like it, it gives it gives them more credibility than it gives me. And yeah, but didn't you say earlier? You know, you like to be able to do what other people can't. So wouldn't there just be some pleasure in it? In yeah, but I, 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 of course. But when you've had eighty something fights, I mean, it's not like I haven't done there, been there, done it. Mm. It's listen. It's not completely off the table. But as things currently stand, with my matrix attack, mm. the fact I'm going to end up back in jail. The fact that I want my car collection back, I want my money back. Like, this is another thing to fight. I've got three or four years of legal battles to worry about. And then by then I'll be, what, 42? I think just the divine timing wasn't right. If it wasn't for this Matrix attack, 100% it would have happened, I think. Mm. I think it would have happened this year. But I, the Matrix attack came and it is what it is. But I've nothing against Jake. Jake's a really nice guy. Logan, I don't know Logan. He's, he spoke shit, but he's just jealous I'm more relevant than he is. And that's it. Mm. So Jordan Peterson called you reprehensible. Oh, um, and only losers. Wait, stop! Wait, wait. Only oh, losers. My heart is broken, please. <laughs> only losers love Andrew Tate. Oh, my heart is broken. Oh, no, not Jordan. Not the, not Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Never cleaning my room again. <laughs> Give a sh. Who cares? You know what? I don't watch any. You know what I find really great? These nerds. Both conservatives and liberal alike, because they're all nerds. They make videos trying to like take me down. And I think it's so funny. Imagine spending four hours editing a video for that guy. That'd be entertaining. I don't watch it. I'm busy. I don't know what they say, and I don't care, and I don't watch it. I have no idea what they say. I don't care. Cool. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I have nothing against Jordan. I'm not emotional about these things. I literally, I genuinely have nothing against Jordan. I could sit and argue with Jordan. I could enter the cage and beat the shit out of him, or I could shake his hand and be his best friend. Whatever he wants, I don't care. Mm. What do you want to do, friend? Hi, Jordan. You want to fight to the death? Or do you want to speak on the same stage on the same side? Or do you want to debate? Or what do you want? I'm not emotional about this. Like, I, it's no big deal to me. I would like to see but, uh, that debate. A good, thorough debate between you two be something that would be a I think it would be boring. Challenge? I think it would be boring. Why? Because I think we agree on most things. Right. I think we agree on everything. And I don't think there'd be a debate because we don't actually disagree. The only disagreement is that I think, and again, this is as someone who's watched very little of his work, but I see clips, etc. He's very intelligent and speaks from a philosophical thought point of view. I think he's very in his mind. There's a lot of thinking. And I am very action-based, and there's a lot of action. I feel like if there's a problem, his answer will be to think certain ways, and my answer will be to do certain things. I always believe in action over everything. I don't believe in stopping and thinking and reading a book from a psychiatrist and pondering why I decided to, to fuck that girl. Okay, blah, blah. Go out, get chicks, boom, get to it. So I feel like he's far more thought based on far more action based. Perhaps we could argue about the methods towards success for that reason. But all in all, I think we agree on most things. The only thing I've ever genuinely disagreed with him about was his tweet on Israel and Ben Shapiro I don't know how he reaches the keyboard. He must have a boot. He's down here somewhere in his booster seat. He's typing. <laughs> yeah, go to war, go to war, yeah, go to war. But, uh... 
<laughs> both of them, both of them were, were the things they said about Israel. I thought were, were reprehensible. That's the only time Jordan said anything I truly disagreed with. Do I think I'm going to let him off here? Do I think he's evil? No, I think he just emotionally reacted to a situation without thinking, and I think he understands how it looks and he regrets it, and we all make mistakes. So I don't hold it against him. But I have nothing against Jordan Peterson. I think if you listen to Jordan Peterson, you're going to be a better person overall. He probably dislikes me. And I understand why he dislikes me. He dislikes me because he thinks, oh, Andrew was a pimp, blah, blah, blah. You know what's funny? I'm going to talk about this whole pimp thing. I'm from a Luton council estate. My neighbor's house got raided for drugs like four times. Right? People around me were stabbed to death. The cars in the car park of my school the teachers' cars were set on fire. Most of the people I went to school with are in jail or sold drugs or murdered people. I'm from the lowest echelon of society in the UK. Before that, I grew up in Gary, Indiana, the murder capital of America. My mother and father split up. I moved to England on my own, single mother household, raised on the council system. Everyone watches Top Boy. Everyone watches these shows where people from this socioeconomic background Sell drugs. Everyone gets it. It's fine. When you're from the bottom, you have to find a way out. The way I found out, the way I found out, I didn't kill grandmas, didn't rob houses, didn't break into cars, didn't sell drugs, didn't do any of the horrible things that everyone does every single day. What did I do was drive traffic to web pages for girls who were already doing OnlyFans and not getting it out. Like a dork. Like a nerd, I found a technical way to drive tra traffic to web pages and escaped the ghetto without mugging anybody, without grabbing anyone up and putting a knife to their throat, nothing. Then these morally pure, white picket fenced, middle class conservatives who grew up in a household where there was always food on the table, who've never seen struggle, sit and say, he's a bad person. If you're from the streets, you'd understand that I've done nothing compared to what I could have done. And the fact that they attack me for it shows how detached they are from reality. And that is why they'll never have the fan base I have, because I can speak to the people at the top and the bottom. If you're going to sit there being raised in a happy middle-class household with food on the table and two Christian parents who love each other very much getting read little bedtime stories, and then you want to sit and tell people from the streets they shouldn't ever drive traffic to a website to escape the ghetto, then you sound like an idiot. Did what I had to do to get out. Jay-Z sold crack to get out. Now he's a rapper. Who holds that against him? Nobody. Worse than driving traffic to a website, I would argue. Nobody. They're just jealous of my monumental success, but there's no light without dark. The reason I'm monumentally successful is because I had to go through those times. That's why they dislike me. That's why Jordan says, Andrew is reprehensible. So yeah, guys, we heard what he said. Uh, basically, I have nothing to add. It. You know, I have nothing. I'm just observing because I have nothing to add to this conversation. What he said right now, I have nothing to. What which point to take? Only thing I can add it is that I'm gonna drop the video, uh, the link in the description, my store. Click on it, purchase something. I'm gonna drop the video what we have in store right now. Check it yeah so as i said before this is the design i made today my book couple design you can see it in blue and pink for women and men we have this one as a new one yeah like i said every day new design you see the, the my favorite one i like this one too it's 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 poetry here uh, i like freedom this one and my favorite is the fox the dream catcher this one is my favorite and this one is also nice, like as you, you can see the, the words, like yeah, we have a bunch of design, you may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us, guys. Just it's not going to take much of you. You're going to choose just one of them, guys. Make click on it, puff and buy. That's that's the easy step you choose. We have different color. You may you choose the color and you just click. We have different, as you can see, and different tie as your size, as you see, you just click. Add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys. Thank you. And I would just uh, tell you to subscribe guys. If you want to have a uh, more reaction coming, just subscribe because I'm dropping every day at 8 p.m. 
and uh, yeah if you want your suggestion you can send it to me no matter what is the suggestion about i'm doing it if it, uh, anyway hate it or like it i'm gonna uh, post it and if you want so it depends i'm just gonna tell you i could sit here all day and i think you probably could as well there's always someone for me to make fun of friend give me a name <laughs> give me a name nah but um <laughs> let's do some quick fire sure um okay what shocks you about your rise to infamy i wouldn't say anything shocked me about it that's a very good question am i arrogant to think it was always going to happen and i deserve it no, I deserve it because I'm so great, but I deserve it because I'm brave enough to help other people. I think God gave it to me because I'm here to help other people. I genuinely believe God gave it to me so that I could run TakePledge.com and feed starving children, help people escape the matrix before the hole in the cloud saves, discloses, save people from depression by explaining to them that nobody cares. I believe I have a purpose. I believe that's why it was given to me. I think it's interesting now that I feel like fame has changed. I don't feel like there's very many famous people anymore. You know, in the 90s or the 80s, Hulk Hogan true, was famous. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> he was everywhere. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, yeah. everywhere. I feel like maybe I'm one of the last true superstars on earth. I, I look at, I think who's as famous as me, and I can't think of anyone. Like, you can name a rapper, and I guarantee if that rapper walked down the street in Mumbai or Bucharest or Tokyo, He'd get approached less than me. Maybe in America he might be known. But like global, world fame. I can't go anywhere. I can't go anywhere without being swarmed. Anywhere. I was in Slovenia when that video was made with the thousands of people around the Bugatti. I can't go anywhere. Uh, I don't know if anyone's even famous anymore. Nah, Cristiano is much more. But I feel like I've only got it to try and help. Football players are always much more. Do. That's why I have to tell the truth. I'm not shocked by how I've been attacked for it. I guess the true answer is I'm shocked I'm still here. I'm shocked they haven't got rid of me yet. I am shocked by that. Mm. If you were to ask me before I was famous, how long can you be famous and really tell the truth? I would have said, because I'm a professional, I would have said, how famous? The most famous man in the world. Tell the truth to who? To everybody, especially the military age males, the number one demographic they need to sigh off to die in the army and to work their ass off as the backbone of the slave force while having no rights. I would have said, a couple months. There's no way they're going to let me years just talk and wake up people's minds once they're awake they ain't going back and they would have said how do you get rid of him i probably would have said will you delete him from everything what if he doesn't get deleted will you put him in jail what if he gets out of jail and then you kill him i'm surprised i'm still here I'm surprised we're filming it's been years now everything's a lie it's all a lie don't believe it <laughs> everything they tell you is a lie Money doesn't work the way they tell you it works. School doesn't work the way they tell you it works. The things they tell you to do to get rich, like get a mortgage and just pay that off after you pay off all your student debts, it's never gonna make you rich. Everything about geopolitics is a lie. We don't need to kill all the people in Yemen for no reason. It's all a lie. It's all an attack on your masculinity. It's all a lie. They haven't killed me yet. <laughs> How do you show love? To who? The this guy. <laughs> talk, talk, talk. That's the good thing about it. He doesn't cut you at all. He let, he let you talk, talk, talk. He doesn't he he doesn't go too much to what you're saying. He doesn't interact uh, interact with too much what you have to say or something like this. He let you finish it, uh, and then he goes just, uh, you know, a random the most random question like he probably write them but i don't think you write them step by step because you just um, okay what do you think about love they was just speaking about lies and they were speaking about what the, the most thing do you lie do you do it's, it's, it's really it's it, it's a combination this interview is a combination of everything information funny sarcastic things serious things sad things everything it's a combination i enjoyed this interview much more than the others if i have to say that to a girlfriend, to my brother, to my children, how? <laughs> to who? To the world, to myself? Yeah, I have to say I thought that was a good question. It was and a good you're, question. You're, you're proving that yours was a better one. I'm just a professional, sir. And I like to have specifics to work with. Well, 
This one I saw it in yeah. a movie. Sometimes. What he said right now, Andrew. Well, I saw it in a movie. On, on the, I can start. Yeah. I start yeah. ranting if you like. Yeah. But I, then I'll just go through them all no. one by one. Yeah, I saw it in a movie. What Andrew Tate here said, like uh, the guy. It was a movie. The guy asked him a question. He says, "Yeah, it was John Tra- John Travolta movie. Yeah, it was John Travolta movie." He said, "Like, ask me uh, which year this guy is born." And he says, "Which month?" And he said, "Tell him the month." Okay, which day? Uh, okay, and they tell him which day. Okay, if uh, male or female. Which state he was born? Okay. Which country he was from? Okay. Ta 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 ta. Where exactly he was born? Which time? Was we, how many minutes? How many seconds? And then, uh, be specific. He can tell him, give me. Spe- I think it's a movie. Yeah. No, I didn't think it in that context, and I'm going to. Uh, I, not not girlfriends, not brother. Um, how do you show love? To. Friends and family. I think you show love through. No, no, no. How do you? Okay. Yeah. I show love to friends and family by being brutally competent. I think a man who is not useful isn't ever going to be loved. And I think you have to give love to receive love. Mm. For me to love someone, I want them to love me. For them to love me, I have to be useful as a man. I think men that are not useful are not loved by anybody, whether it's their girlfriend or society or other men. If I had a brother and I said to him, I need help with this, and he said, Dunno, can't, tired, well, then what's the point of you? If, you if, a, if a wife asked her husband to fix a problem and he goes, Dunno, can't, tired, she wouldn't love him anymore. Useless men, men who are not useful, are not loved. As a man, you're never truly loved for who you are. You're loved for how useful you are. And, and they'll lie to you about this, especially women. I'd love you even if you were a useless loser. Then why aren't you with a useless loser? You always seem to be with the winner. Isn't that funny? Your love for how useful you are. So if I want to show love to my friends and family, I want them to love me, which means I have to be ultimately useful. That's how I show love. And is that how you show love to women? Yeah, I'm the guy people call when they have a problem. If you end up with one phone call, whether you're kidnapped, arrested, trapped under rubble, whatever it is, and you can call one person, you call Andrew Tate. If you have my number, if you're fortunate enough, you call me. I'm the problem solver. They love me. I'd love people who could fix all my problems. If I had a number I could call to get rid of this matrix attack, I'd love that guy too. Of course. I fix everyone's issues. If you need $10 million, you call me. So for that reason, I'm loved. And the way I can show love to them is always being able to fix their problems. If you're a man and you love the people around you, you better get as strong and rich and competent as possible to show it. If you're a weak, useless man, how can you even show love? Hugs? You're weak and useless. They don't want your hugs. You're slimy. If you're a man and you want to show love to people, you need to show it through competence. I don't know how a man who has no constitution about him can even show love, because that's how love is shown. Love is shown via protection, physical. Protection, which can be helping them make the right decisions, which comes from wisdom. Finance, you show love by giving them money so they're protected. My woman will not have to wait at a bus stop where she could be attacked. She'll get picked up by armed guards in a Rolls Royce. All that requires my competence to show love. If I was incompetent, how could I even show love? Hold hands, hug. Problem with that is- Do you hug people? Of course, but the problem is with a hug from a guy without competence isn't scarce, it's not rare. It's it's needy. Well, it's, it's not more like a needy, it's, it's, I want your energy out of you. And it's easy to find. Mm. And it's only the scarcity of something that gives it value. If you're a normal dude, the biggest problem you have is that your woman's clearly fine f***ing normal dudes. Means you better watch out when she goes to order a KFC bucket, because she's going to order from a normal dude. You might give her a smile. That was <laughs> cheesy as fuck. Ex- extra, little, extra little packet of ketchup before you know it, she's on her back. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that because there's no one on my echelon. My woman can can go through life for the next 20 years interacting with dudes at shopping malls, whatever, whatever, and it's just like, you're not Andrew, you're not Andrew, you're not Andrew, you're not Andrew, you're not. There's no one else up here on the top of the mountain. So, but I show love to her by being that guy. So if you're a man and you want to show love to the people around you, you need to get up and become important and strong and rich. And if you don't have the motivation to do that, then you don't even love the people around you. You don't love yourself or anyone else. 
That's how I show love. I show love to the people who I care about by always being the person who can help them when they need, which means I need to get up and train. I need to get up and work. I need to make a bunch more money, more connections, more important friends, more houses, more everything. That's how you show love as a man. I don't see how useless men even show love. I can't, I can't think of a way. Now, as a thought experiment, if I was a useless man, how would I show love? And there's no possible way, because you can flutter with messages. That's what useless men usually do, flutter with messages, flutter with time. But your time has no value. So it doesn't matter if I give you a 10 million useless pesos. They're useless. This is what a lot of men don't understand. It's kind of interesting. When you become ultra important, your time is super valuable. So my time is, I know England hates me, but you know what? The British pound sterling is still the best looking money. My time's the British pound sterling, one pound. If I give her an hour a month, it has value. But if you're Zimbabwean dollars or whatever they had, Zimbabwean pounds, I think it was pounds, your currency is completely valueless. You can give her a million hours. It doesn't mean anything because you're not important. This is what unimportant men don't understand. They're like, I text you all the time, I send you flowers, I message you, I hug you, I flood your phone, I tell you how much I love you, and you just left me for that guy, and he doesn't even reply. Because his one reply is worth a million hours of your replies because you're a nobody. So even your attention has That's no really value smart. when you're useless. And you have it's nothing else to do. Really so what, how can you show love as a man if you don't have competence? I can't even think of how you can show it. That would be actually a terrible existence to love people and not be able to show it. But if you truly love them, you wouldn't stay useless. And maybe you don't love anyone. Maybe you're just an empty shell from the Matrix. Maybe you're a slave. Part of the AI machine. Time to get your QR code stamped on your forehead. Interesting. If you love anybody or anything, you're going to become important. Even if you love your town, you'll learn to fight. If you love your city, you'll join your army. Whatever. Love is the bottom. Love is the driver for all masculine achievement and competence. So I'm a man full of love. <laughs> By extension, my brutal competence is nothing other than proof of how love-filled I am. What's a story you've never told or a secret you've never shared? I got robbed in Moscow. I don't think I've ever told this story. Have I ever told this one? Let me think. I don't think so. I got robbed in Moscow. So When was it? What happened? And I like Russia, and I like Russians, but it was the first time I went to Moscow. Three years ago, four years ago. So, do I tell this story? Yeah, I'll tell this story. That's a brand new. Everything starts with England, doesn't it? Man, I'm such an attack vector. So I'm talking to this chick on the phone. Blah, blah, blah. I'm ignoring her. She keeps messaging me. Come, Russia. Come, Russia. Come, Russia. I'm like, no, I'm not coming to Russia. I'm fucking asleep. Then, like, seven other baddies from Russia start messaging me. I'm like, why do all these hot girls want me to go to Russia? Why well, everyone wants me to go to Russia? This sounds like a setup. Something ain't right. But I'm glad I can go to Russia. I can't get a visa anyway. It's too much work. Then the football game came. There was some football thing. I think it was a FIFA, I don't know, football, Euro game, something. It was in Moscow. Okay, that was the World Cup. 2018 was visa. the World Cup. To go to Russia. So I was like, this is the easiest a visa is ever going to be. Do I go? And then I looked up and I found a game. I think it was like Poland versus Korea or something. Okay. It was like six euros. This ticket to this game. <laughs> it's like a six euro Russian visa with no work. Okay. But I'm going to be on my game because I don't trust this. They're after me, the agents. So I buy this ticket. I get my visa. I fly to Moscow. I booked the Kapinski in advance, the Kapinski Hotel, because I think if I stay in a five star hotel, I land at the airport, I've got my bag, I go to walk out, guy in a yellow vest goes, taxi, taxi, I say, yep, taxi, I go to get in taxi, and he starts walking towards the civilian car park, and this has happened to me a lot of times in Eastern Europe, it happened to me in Moldova, even in Romania, it happens sometimes, people pretend to be taxis, but they're not taxis, and they try to take it to their car, and I'm like, no, no, I want an official taxi, not get in your car, so I am a taxi, I was like, no, 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 been around, goodbye, turn around, start rolling back through the taxis, him and his yellow vest runs up, he goes, okay, 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 and he points at this yellow car that says taxi in the taxi rank, taxi. And he goes, says something to him in Russian, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, okay, here, taxi, sir, taxi. Guy gets out, the taxi driver. Taxi driver gets out. He's like six foot, 130 kilo Mongolian like a wrestler. Gets out. Zangief. Bro. Yeah, Zangief. <laughs> Zangief gets out. And because this is how my mind works, I look at him up and down and go, could I take him? Be messy. 
So he gets out, he opens the trunk. I'm not sure it's me to put my bag in the trunk, put my bag in the trunk, put it in the trunk, get in the back of the car. The car starts driving down the railway in Russia. And he has his phone as the meter, which is the first suspicious thing. And his phone is up there, and, his, and this, this number, Russian rubles, is going through the fucking roof. I'm like, how much is the Russian ruble? I don't even know. So I get my phone out, and I turn on the data, and I get my text message. Hi, data is 25 pounds a megabyte. You know, whatever, not cool, whatever. How much is the Russian ruble? And I worked out that I've been in this car for four minutes, and I owe $600 in taxes. So there's no way that's the taxi fare. So we're driving down the highway at speed, and I'm like, brother, this is fake. This, this is a scam, bro. And this is the weirdest experience of my life. I've met, he totally ignored me. But what can you do? He's driving the car. And people don't ignore me when I talk. So this big man's driving the car, and I've tapped him on the shoulder saying, you're trying to rob me. I was like, bro, you're trying to rob me. Stop the car. And he's just like, just totally ignore him. He's driving the car. So I'm like, what? I don't want to hit him, but I guess I kind of had to. So I shoved him so the car moved a bit and said, stop the fucking car. I'm not paying this. I don't have the money. I don't have the money. Bro, I've been around long enough. I know a killer when I see one. And he turned around and looked me dead in the eye. This man's killed someone, I swear to God. Because I have that look, so I know when I see it. Takes one to know one. He looks me dead in the eye, looks back, gets the phone, dials a number, hands me the phone. And he says he doesn't speak English. So the phone says, hello? It's the first guy who tried to take me to the car. He goes, you wanted a taxi. I was like, bro. I don't even have this money on me. So I don't know what you expect to happen because I don't have this money on me. Because you wanted a taxi, pay the fare. I said, bro, I can't pay it. I don't have it. Tell him to stop at the nearest gas station. I'll give him the money I have on me and I'll get a real taxi. Hold on. Didn't even answer me. Just hung up on me. So I go, what can I do here? If I hit this guy, I guess the car crashes. This other guy isn't answering. They want money I no longer have. So I tapped the guy and I said, okay, 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 I'll pay it. Call your friend again. Call your friend. Gives me the phone again. I was like, listen, I had like, I think I had like $4,000 on me. I said, look, I have $500 is all I have. I'll pay the $500 when we get to the end, if you let me out. The guy goes, no, you paid the meter. I hung up again. Unbelievable. So I thought it would be smart. So I emailed, because my phone call wasn't working, so I emailed the Kapinski and said, I'm having a problem with the taxi. Can someone be waiting for me outside the Kapinski Hotel? It's urgent, please. As a, I emailed their info at Kapinski.Russia as a complete random. And I thought they'd never reply in time. They replied instantly, in 20 seconds. Yes, sir, someone be waiting for you, no problem. I was like, ah, thank God they replied to that. That's great. The concierge can argue, the taxi driver can work all this out. So now I'm just relaxing. I'm kind of chill a bit. I just had to prod the guy. I was like, you speak English then? Totally don't. I was like, you're friendly. So I'm just talking shit. So anyway, <laughs> we pull up at the hotel. I'm all confident, right? Guy's going to be outside. I pull up at the hotel. No, no, no concierge, nothing. So I said to the guy, I go to get out of the car. I get out of the car. The guy then gets out of the car, just comes, and he stands face to face with me like a boxing stare off. He shows me the phone of how much I owe him. Must by now, must, I didn't know what it was me. It was 3,000 American dollars, something ridiculous. I said, bro, I don't have it. He looks at me like he's going to murder me. I don't have it. I said, I have $500, that's all I have. He goes, okay. Using my ninja fingers, my hands, I reach in my pocket and I ninja off like five hundred. Because <laughs> I've got a pile of money like this. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I give it to him. And then the f takes the money, go, and I'm, I'm standing at the back of the car, waiting for him to open the trunk, gets in the car, and starts driving down the road. I'm like, bro, bro, my bag, my bag, my bag. He stops like five meters later and goes, the rest of the money. He knew. <laughs> they set me up when I put my bag in the trunk at the beginning. And my bag's got my laptop, my, all my clothes, everything, which is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, if you ever get in a taxi, don't put your bag in the boot. It's a setup. I was like, you fuck. I was like, call your friend. So he calls his friend. I said, listen, I've already given him $500. It's very clever what you did with the bag. It's like, the guy from the Kapinski is about to come out now. I can't give you more than this. We have to come up to something sensible. I said, I can go to a cash point and try and get some more money, but I need my bag. And he goes, okay, 500 more. I said, fine. 
hung up the phone, instantly peeled off 500 and brought a bunch of cash coins. And then guy gets back out the car, and me and him have a Mexican standoff in the back of the car. He opens up the boot. He, go, he, he grabs my bag. I've got the money. And we kind of <laughs> swap them. <laughs> That's a new one. Just after we've done that, after I paid this fucker $1,000, the guy from the Kapinski walks out. Oh, Mr. Tate, you need help. I'm like, yeah, help. Yeah, carry my bag. You're useless. It's been 10 minutes. Where have you been? Oh, sorry, Mr. Tate. Uh, useless. It's kind of funny because for the, my other four days in Moscow, I had a great time. I love the Russian people. They're very nice. I guess I was unlucky. But every time I left the hotel, there was like a row of taxis, and they all looked like this guy. And they'd all stare at me. And I thought, I'm so glad I paid him, because I guarantee if I got in a fight with that guy, I'd be dead by now. They're just waiting outside the Kapinski, these dudes. And the lesson is, never put your bag in the back of a taxi. That's the lesson for everybody, and that's the story. And I survived, and I had a great time in Moscow. But I'm not going to lie, it did sour things a little bit for me. I was a bit nervous on edge. And that's how I paid $1,000 for a taxi. Turns out the official rate, which I found out on the way back to the airport, which was booked from the hotel, I think it was like six bucks. <laughs> you go. <laughs> I got wrecked. But to lose my bag and my luggage was worth so much more. Well, and surely the thousand dollars, the lesson was worth more than a thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, I like to look in the eyes of killers. There's not many people like that around anymore in the West. So you I kind think. of enjoyed it in a way. I mean, Russia's Russia. In the West, you don't see that look very often. But um. It was a stark reminder of the realities of this world, because the realities of the world always boil down to violence. Mm. And I understand that very well. And sometimes you get a little bit comfortable. There are people who walk around through Earth. They're walking around. We're looking, I can look outside right now. There's people walking around, and they don't understand that every single thing they rely on and everything they love is backed by violence. It always has been. It always will be. The whole underpinning of a civilized society is violence. The only reason we don't need violence is because there is a threat of violence. And you can nail it down to any law and regulation, as simple as a parking ticket. If you to be honest, that really was an interesting story, because Eastern Europe is like that. Eastern Europe, uh, the, the, the corruption is too much high, and a uh, lot, lot of people can scam you, so you need to be careful when you go to Eastern Europe. Don't think that you, uh, you go in, for example, and I'm coming from one, I was living in Ukraine, so don't think like going to Ukraine, you're not... Uh, you're gonna have the the party life and shit like that. You need to be careful. Pay your parking ticket. They will give you a fine. But in all cases, it's beautiful. Ukraine is beautiful. Go to court. I recommend house, everyone to visit the house. The Police will come. Kick the shit out of you. Very good job. It ends in violence in all things, and it was a good reminder to understand that making a mistake, putting my bag in the back of a car in the in the boot as opposed to keeping it on me, brought me this close to a physical confrontation with probably a Mongolian wrestling champion in the middle of a street in Moscow, by myself. And it's a good reminder that violence is always so close. It's only a few mm. steps away at all times. And, and, the, and the reminder that if you have enough money, you can buy yourself out of debt. Well, yeah. Because if you hadn't had a thousand, five thousand or been rich. I would have been in a lot of trouble, you, yeah. You could have been dead. I think so. And it was good also to, to see that I felt nerves, but they were the same nerves I felt before I fought. I didn't feel fear, which was a good reminder as well, to know that I'm still not afraid. I get, I get nerves because the nerves sharpen, but I don't feel fear, which was a good thing. Mm. But uh, I still remember his eyes. You, you know, I don't think I've ever been looked at like that in the West. And that's another thing that we can tie back into our whole conversation we just had about how certain societies still operate in a certain way, and our Western societies are so failed. Maybe I should have told him about LGBT and feminism, and he might have <laughs> let me go. Maybe I should have said, this is, this is bad, this is misogynist. Maybe I should just talk some garbage. He would have let me off. Or is the brutal reality of the world. No, that's the real world, bro. You cannot get out of that situation except how he did it. He yeah, that's out. that's all. You know, you have to understand. That's the only thing how to get out of that situation. Because you, you will not get what you want if you don't pay. That's that's, that's the way it is. You, you can fight, but you are in an environment of not really in a good position to fight. Because you are in a, a, a random country. You don't have nobody beside you. So that's really... You need to be careful that... Don't be, don't try to be a superhero, especially when you know that they can do a lot worse than that. Do not try to be a superhero and say, I'm in touch, uh, nobody can touch me. And that's so it was smart what he ideas. did. Just try which to money. Which we can also tie back into what's very really interesting. All these ideals which are against men are defended by men. Think about it. If feminists go to a feminist rally and anyone tries to interrupt that rally, who comes to stop you? policemen, 
defend the idea which is designed to destroy them. Do you remember when America left the Taliban? So America, sorry, America left Afghanistan and the Taliban took over in like a day. I was having a debate with some feminist. And she was talking about how terrible Afghanistan is going to be because the women can't go to school anymore. And women need I was to go having to school. that debate with Pierce Morgan. I was saying, yeah, well, I think women should go to school. I'm not saying women should you go just to told school. Him I would argue that in certain realms, women are not already equal to men. She goes, why? So, well, you just proved it. The American army left. The Afghanistani Defense Force, the ADF, was left to, to defend the girls' schools. The Taliban started coming. Imagine that. If you've been hired into the ADF, you get paid $225 a month. You're given a gun. There's some guy. Guard this girl's school. Girls really need to go to school. Fine. Stand there. America abandoned you. You no longer have air support. You no longer have night vision. They're gone. Taliban are gearing up. You see the dust of the Humvees in the distance, the pickup trucks, and they're coming. You stand there like, do I want to defend this girl's school? And they bounced. Ooh. Fair enough. So I said to her, why don't the women defend the school? He said this to no, Piers Morgan. I do? heard it only in Piers Morgan, this why conversation. Equal to men? Well, no, not that. Oh, so, so the men have to die so you can go to school. Feminist. I mean, I'm just trying to understand. I'm not attacking your ideals. I'm understanding. You believe women are equal to men until it comes to defending the idea that men have to defend your idea. Which means men are the only ones who allow you to have the idea in the first place. Because if we don't defend it, it doesn't exist. Which means we own feminism as ours. <laughs> Thanks so much for strong and independent. It's men's. It's all ours. So in the realities of the world, all this garbage falls away anyway. Because the reality of the world is if you're not prepared to die to defend an idea, you don't have an idea. You're not allowed one. That's the bottom line. And that's what's so scary about all these ideals which are designed to attack masculinity is that the last masculine men which exist defend it. Last question. Sure. Is happiness the purpose of life? And if it isn't, what is? OK, the purpose of life, from a boring answer, is to procreate as much as possible. I've even mentioned as many children as possible. To further expand, I do not believe happiness is the importance. Uh, it's the purpose of life for a man. I believe happiness is what children should uh, strive for, and I believe women should aim to be happy. I believe happiness is for women and children. I believe men should have a sense of purpose. I believe you should live for something. If you live for happiness, then you're hedonistic. You go to festivals, you do drugs, you drink alcohol, you're an idiot. Living for happiness as a man makes you an idiot. 99% of the time. If you live for happiness as a woman, you probably want to have a good relationship with your spouse, and you want to be giddy, and you want to laugh and joke, and raise your children, and make pretty things, and it's, it's pretty good. But male happiness is, is just being an idiot. I think you need a sense of purpose as a man. I think you need to have something to live and to die for. If you feel purposeful, you'll never feel sad. You may be stressed and you may be yeah, dizzy. You'll okay, never feel yeah. sad. And I think your purpose can make you happy, but I don't think men should be chasing happiness. They should be chasing purpose. I wouldn't describe myself as a happy person. I don't wake up and go, yeah, I'm not two. And I'm <laughs> I mean, my, my chick's happy. <laughs> Yay, Italy! Yay, private jet! Wow, this pasta's great! Yay, Ferrari! I'm just kind of like, whatever. She's happy. That's her job. That's why she's around me. She's the happiness. Women bring the vibes, men bring the money. She's happy, good. I want her to be happy. I would hate to be with a miserable woman. But I think men being happy is kind of infantile. I, maybe I'm wrong. I would hate to be with a miserable woman, but. I would like to actually ask women, would you want to be with a happy man? I think women love me because of my competence and because of what I can do. But imagine being with a happy man. Imagine, I don't know. I'm, I'm just speaking. You're a woman, and your man is happy. I love coffee. This is great. Have you ever had this? Wow. <laughs> I think this answer, I will answer it by watching a series back in the days. It was Friends. If you are familiar with guys, was friends and it, uh, the girl was dating a happy man all the time happy like oh I know your friend I know this guy and I know this guy I remember the scene I love this guy and he was happy about everything like he said exactly like 
oh coffee and then after two or three days he just become tired of him like he's too much happy i cannot deal with him like you know i think it's answered. i think it's answered this one doesn't gay mean happy i don't know <laughs> i'm just talking i don't think i'm supposed to be happy I, I have things to do important things stressful things i have things to do i'm supposed to be competent and purposeful and i'm supposed to attack the matrix you and tell can the be truth heavy, and the no mentioned. aikido and make murderers apologize to me in jail and survive the mongolian wrestler who wanted to kill me and i'm supposed to do all of that i don't know at what point i'm supposed to be smiling like a child my children are supposed to be happy the women around me are supposed to be happy but that's not my job or my purpose i think the men who want to be happy or losers. And I think if, I think that would actually be a turnoff for most women. I think if you were to, if a, if a man were to say to a woman, I just want to be happy and don't want to have any stress, you know, I just want to be happy. I think Gosh. a woman deep in her heart would be like, what? What do you mean be happy? Pay my bills. <laughs> I don't think she wants that either. That's true. So you if your base purpose is to recreate and being happy, I'm not saying be miserable at all. I think people understand what I'm saying here. And being happy for the sake of happiness itself repels females, then I don't think happiness is the purpose of life as a man. No, you're supposed to be important. Was Genghis Khan happy? I don't think so. You wouldn't have thought so. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe him as happy. Because he went and conquered the whole world. He cannot be happy. happy. You'd say he's competent. You'd say he's successful. You'd say he's ruthless. You'd say he's smart. You'd say he was a tactical genius. You'd say lots of things before you ever got to happy, if you ever got there. Do we remember the happy men of history? What? And plus, I mean, pers if you're purposeful, it's lasting. Happiness is fleeting. That's the problem. Which means you're always going to be chasing a higher high. You'll be happy, and then it will go away. Then you want to be happy again, then it will go away. You're going to end up just doing dumb shit until you become a drug addict. I took a little bit of drugs, made me happy, and now it doesn't work, so I'm going to take more drugs and just tell me happy. Chasing happiness is, is a spiral to nowhere. I will argue that my largest transformative periods in my life, the times when I've done the most amazing things, are not when I was happy. It was when I was the complete opposite. Mm. If you were to tell me, how do you completely transform your life, I'd say end up depressed. When you're depressed, you can transform your life. That's when your soul is malleable enough for you to do whatever it requires to go through the pain. That's when you can look a guy in the face and say, shoot me. I don't care. That's when you're dangerous. That's when you get things done. That's when you get rich. That's when you become a man. That's when you train. That's why I miss my nightmares. Now I sleep. I'm mad at myself. I'm disappointed in me. I'm like, what? No. Slept four hours. No. Wake up. And swaying and panicking. That's what I should be doing. I don't want to be happy. What do I want to be happy for? I want to grab life by the throat and squeeze it. I want the Matrix to lock me up again. I don't care. It's kind of like, you know, I, I've always liked people who are very competent but depressed. I've known some people who are like depressed and miserable, but they're very competent. And I like them because if I hired a happy person, he's only one bad event away from becoming useless. So this guy's already at the bottom, bro. And he's getting everything done. <laughs> you can't hurt this guy. He has nothing to lose. I like him. Give me more of this guy. They're like, hey, bro, your car just got stolen. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, those, those are the best. I love those guys. Uh, maybe I put on a happy veneer, but I'm kind of one of them. I, I expect any minute for police to bust in here and drag me away. I'm like, Told ya. Do, do, do. Who cares? Yeah. Happy people are. Yeah. Oh, I'm sad. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, don't, I don't know. I don't think men should be operating in this paradigm. Another way I can answer the question is I think happiness. There's a really interesting uh, documentary about colors, and it was about an African tribe, and it was talking about how colors affect language. So in your book, this is red and this is blue because we've labeled them as such. And they showed this African tribe that had different names for very different shades of green. And to them, they were clearly different colors, but to us, they're just green. But this tribe couldn't tell the difference between red and blue because to them, it was the same color. So they couldn't see the difference in the colors by how the language determined how your eyes can detect colors. It was very interesting. And I think the same can be for happy. If you set 
the idea of happy as laughing like a child in giddish immaturity, then you're only gonna be happy a couple of times a month, truthfully, if you're an adult. But if you set the bar of happy as anything over distraught, then you're always happy. When you feel true pain in life, if your parent were to die, your instant reaction is silence. When someone's really hurt, they don't talk. When you're really depressed, you don't talk. My first day in jail, I didn't speak. You don't talk when bad things happen. If you got a phone call and someone said your all your family just died in a car crash, you'd freeze. You don't talk. So if you set your mind to say, if I am speaking, I am happy. Because I'm clearly not distraught and I'm a happy person most of the time. I'm happy 99.9% .9 of the time now because I have decided what happy is. But if you decide I'm only happy when I'm laughing like a child and I have no stress at all and nothing's going wrong and I'm at a festival and my girlfriend love, loves me, and me well, then you're, then you're never going to reach it. And then you're going to destroy your life trying to reach it. So happiness is also self-prescribed. So I think if you're a man and your arms are functioning and you can speak today because nothing terrible has happened, then you should be happy. And don't worry. Don't worry, guys. Bad things are going to happen. They're going to come. You have nothing to worry about. There will be a day you wake up and somebody you love has died. And you can be sad that day. Why waste a perfectly good day being sad when sad days are guaranteed to come? Everyone you love is going to die. Don't worry about it. Sad days. So guys, let's just stop it here right now. It's all right. We, we finish the video. Two hours, 20, uh, 29 minutes, 24 minutes left. So not, I don't think he's going to add it more. Anyways, finish the video. So I hope you enjoy it, guys. If you want to see more reaction of different, as I said before, no matter what is the suggestion about, I will do it. Even I hate it or I like it, I'm going to show it anyway. I'm going to post it no matter what, like it or hate it. And then we can agree or disagree in the comment. Also, make sure make sure to check the store, guys. As I said, I am I have a new design every day. I'm trying to make new design, and you I will leave it in the link in the description. You can check it, and I will leave you the video right here. What to to see right now? What kind of uh, videos? What kind of uh, design we have in the store? So. Make sure to subscribe guys and yeah so as i said before this is the design i made today my book couple design you can see it in blue and pink for women and men we have this one as a new one yeah like i said every day a new design you see the, the my favorite one i like this one too it's 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 poetry here uh, i like freedom this one and my favorite is the fox the dream catcher this one is my favorite and this one is also nice, like as you, you can see the, the words, like yeah, we have a bunch of design, you may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us, guys. Just it's not going to take much of you. You're going to choose just one of them, guys. Make click on it, puff and buy. That's that's the easy step you choose. We have different color. You may you choose the color and you just click. We have different, as you can see, and different tie as your size, as you see, you just click add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys thank you and make sure to buy from the store to purchase something from there guys uh, it's nothing it's 50 euro maybe 59 euros this is really nothing for you guys i'm sure you make uh, much more of that in a day anyway see you for other reaction guys peace